hello there what's going on mic check one two mic check one two miggity 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 mic check one two what's cracker lacking what's happening welcome back to the random show my friends welcome back to the show hope you're well wherever you may be random show sayings episode number 217 with i your familiar host the friend you wish you never had Agostino Zinger, what's happening? Random show settings. Hope you're well wherever you may be. Hope you're doing fucking swimmingly. Today's a bit of a quick one, not super long, but a bit of a quick one still because of the recent developments that just happened the last, what, couple of hours. Dana White going that fucking papa, so we had to jump on the stream and talk about that because it's pretty monumental in the old Bapaverse land. Unfortunately, um, Dana has walked it back a bit by replying back to Brendan's comment and saying fantastic so it's kind of diluted the sting of the burn but still we're going to analyze the burn we're also going to analyze um some other bits and bobs loads of other stuff we've got to check through so yeah here we are man you're big up on the protocol I appreciate you man I appreciate you yeah I'm the same I'm the same and there's loads of live streams that I watch on YouTube I watch a lot of live streams and I barely comment on any of them barely do you know what I mean? But the one thing I do do, I love reading it. When I'm watching a live stream, I love reading the comments while I'm watching it because you always get some good laughs in there. So I'm the same as you. I barely really comment on any, to be fair. Um, there's a few I do sometimes comment here and there, but for the most of them, I just, I'm the silent, you know, lurker there in the corner, critiquing, laughing, you know, cheesing, all that good stuff. So yeah, big up you. Appreciate you for joining. Big up Don Dutta, I see you there. Big up Keith T, what's happening? What's happening? POV UT, what's happening? Jock Donaghy Jr., what's good, my guy? Hope you're well. Eduardo Madeira, hope you are good as well. Hope you are awesome. Hope you are awesome. Host, you are awesome. Oh, yeah, true. The Haney, yeah. Oof. I'm a big fan of Ryan Garcia as a personality, as a human being, you know, as a, as fitness inspiration on social media. I don't like how he's going out, man. I've been kind of keeping away from that Ryan Garcia news because it kind of bums me out. I'm not going to lie. Seeing Ryan Garcia the way he is at the moment is really, really bumming me out. So I'm trying not to watch, but you can't help but, you know, because he's so famous, you can't help but see the content. I've seen the videos of him going, you know, at the fucking weigh-ins, chugging a beer. I've seen the footage of him looking a bit, you know, all over the place. I've heard about the mental breakdown, breakthrough, whatever he's going through. It's all been a mess. So I'm trying not to fucking even keep an eye on it. I don't have anyone, Teju. I don't have anybody. I just hope everybody leaves that fight safe and healthy. It's not really that important to me to fight anymore, to be fair, because that guy clearly looks like he's going through it. So I don't really care, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. I don't really care. I'm just want, I just want everyone to be safe, you know? I want everyone to be safe. I'm saying the generic non-committal thing that people say. I'm saying the DSP thing. I just want everyone to be happy, you know? So I'm just I'm just saying the most non-committal thing possible because I don't want anybody to be sad, you know? That's it, brother. That's fucking it, man. That's fucking it. You feel me? But I hope you're all well, man. Hope everybody else is well. Give me a little shout if you are. That'd be much appreciated. Let me know if you are flipping good. Um, What's happening here? What's happening here? What's happening here? Let's jump into it. Let's just jump into it. Let's just not waste any more time. Have you guys heard the Chris Brown diss to Quaver? Have you motherfuckers heard the Chris Brown diss to Quaver? I think this diss might be harder than anything we've heard so far between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. This diss is fucking crazy. It's called Weakest Link. And Chris Brown, number one, he's got a pretty good rapping voice. For someone that sings, he doesn't have like sometimes when people when singers do rapping voices, I feel like Tory Lanez is another one. He's got a really good rapping voice. Sometimes singers have this weird like singy rapping voice, but Chris Brown actually sounds pretty good when he raps. I'm not going to lie, he actually looks he sounds quite good. So Quaver's gonna have to come with some real hard bars, pause to get him back. But yeah, this is a pretty pretty solid diss. I'm not going to lie. Listen to it. Oh, hold on. Let's go back. Let's pause that. Hopefully you guys haven't heard it. I'm sure you have heard it already because it's been all over social media. So I'm definitely not the first person to fucking break this. That's, that's for sure. Let's see if it loads. Let's go back here. 
got some plans so we can get into some gangster shit. Okay, Chris. I don't want no issues, bro. I don't want Allegedly, this voicemail at the start of this song is Quavo leaving Chris Brown a voicemail saying he doesn't want any smoke. Imagine leaving someone a voicemail begging not to beat you up. I don't want no issues, bro. I don't want no smoke. I don't want fights. I don't want to do nothing. I'm not going to lie, not to be that guy, but this explains a lot. This explains why when Takeoff unfortunately lost his life, nothing really happened, you know? Not that something has to happen, but you know what I mean. If these guys are really about it, body should have been dropping in retaliation for your brother passing away the way he did. The fact that he no body's actually dropped, the fact that, you know, Jay Prince and all those guys are still, Jay Prince Jr. and those guys are still walking around like they're untouchable, it shows you that, you know, they didn't really have any weight in the streets, you know? These guys didn't really have any weight, um, the Migos, unfortunately, which is sad to be fair because... Of all the people in that group who are onto Passer, Takeoff seemed to be the most chill one, and he was the one that passes. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't really the one that was on madness. He was really the ones. He really wasn't the one that was turned up. He was re never really involved in drama. So for him to lose his life was so tragic. But that's the way of the streets, I guess, isn't it? Sometimes the one that don't quote unquote deserve it are the ones that deserve it. Uh, sorry, sometimes the ones that don't deserve it are the ones that it happens to which is probably the saddest thing. I mean, I'm sure we all have stories of people we grew up with in rough areas where they weren't really involved and then they got involved once and then that one time was the time that they perished. You know, that kind of story is always tragic. Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke with C? Who wants want smoke with me? Who wants... Okay, let's get down to the facts, pussy. I'm dripping red. Don't let this RB shit fool you niggas get ripped to shreds. He started off straight away letting him know he's Pyro. He let him know straight away I'm dripped in fucking red. I'm Pyro, motherfucker. Watch your steps. And I'm a big fan of Quavo, but this is a hard diss. Quavo talking like he a thug, nigga, you a bitch with dread Can't wait to see the day that you back up all of that shit you said What's all that ball shit you talking, you ain't no huncho, nigga You the weakest link out of your click, let's keep it a hundo, nigga You fuck my ex, ho, that's cool, I don't give no fuck, little nigga Cause I fucked your ex when you was still with a bitch, I'm up, little nigga By the way, by the way That is a mad diss Everybody finding out in real time that Chris Brown fuck sweetie while she was with Quavo is wild. But it also goes to prove how wicked, how wicked and evil some women are, <laughs> right? She must have known that Quavo and Chris Brown have always had some static. Women know, right? You usually complain about guys, or maybe you don't. By the way, they do. Oh, fuck it, they do. Women know, right? He's probably complaining about Quavo, he's probably complaining about Chris Brown at home. Maybe they hear stories about what's happened, you know, from their girlfriends. But there's no way of doubting that fucking she did not know that Quavo has a problem with Chris Brown. And then she goes and fucks him. Women must know that kind of stuff can get people that get people killed. It has done and it probably will do. Because that's wild. It also doesn't paint Sweetie in the best light. Because now that that's what? That's like so what you fucked Quavo behind these you fucked Chris Brown behind Quavo's back. There's also a rumor that you might have fucked Offset, which is why Cardi B doesn't like you. Like you're coming across like a bit of a slag, isn't it? Not that it's a problem. Who gives a fuck? The little baby thing as well. She had that drama with little baby. She seems like a bit of a slag. Not that it's a problem, but kind of wild. They say revenge is sweet. Now think about that shit. Don't let that line go over your head. I might just sing about that shit. I had a feeling about that dick. <laughs> they say revenge is sweet. Don't let that go over your head. You can't go. That's the most baited bar ever. They say revenge is sweet. Get it? Like sweetie. Oi. There's something sweet about that shit. I got some tea about that bitch, but I ain't gonna speak about that shit. I love how you made it very clear as well, because I think. Quavo probably could have thought, oh, it's any of my exes. But he may, no, I'm not talking about any of your exes. I'm talking specifically about Sweetie. You made that very clear, you know? Don't let that get over your head. I've got, you know, sweet. I've got some tea on it, but I'm not going to talk about it. Oof, Chris Brown. I ain't 
playing chess with a checker player. I'm a ticking bomb on a detonator. I shit on niggas, I'm a defecator. I put amigo on a ventilator. Stop talking about beating girls. You was beating bitches on the elevator. We seen the taste, that's devastating. You to be fair, pointing fingers about who hits girls the hardest or who's the worst woman beater isn't really a flex. I'm not gonna lie. Being like, oh no, you hit girls way harder than me. You was on video. My was on a video. It's like, bro, we all see the pictures of Rihanna after the alleged beating in the car. That picture will not leave some people's minds. Some people still hate Chris Brown till this day because of that Rihanna thing. And they've both forgiven each other. They've both forgiven each other. They've both moved on. But people till this day still hate Chris Brown for it. So come on, man. Come on. You know, you can't really be pointing fingers because, you know, and Quavo's thing wasn't that bad. If I remember Quavo's thing specifically, um, she was trying to l take something that was his and he was pulling it off from, from her and he kind of, you know, wrestled her to the ground. But he didn't, you know, clinch his fist and hit her. He didn't slap her, nothing. He was just trying to get, I think it was a, I think it might have been a PlayStation or something back from her. But that was it. So Chris Brown can't really talk about pointing fingers, you know what I mean? Like, Chris has got some, you know, exactly the Karuchi, exactly the Karuchi restraining order. Chris has got some... When it comes to women, Chris has got some scaly dons. Let's be real. Doing bad, you a bitch in your music trash. Fashion week, they set me next to your lame ass. I was truly mad. All I kept thinking about was breaking your face, but I gave you a pass. You lucky I ain't wanna fuck the money up, boy. I would have broke you in half. Quit trying to be tough, you ain't like that. Why you keep showing off? Quit talking about drugs, you the only pack that I've been smoking on. I just hit my plug, told him come back, I'ma need more than one. Your last album was a weed trade, just some bullshit that we roll up on. You know what's on, put you to bed. Now Yo, big up. Um, I don't think it, it, it read it because you said bitch. So big up Assad. I appreciate you, brother. It says Blueface once said, "Don't be up the homie. What? Don't don't, don't be up the homie because he beat up your because he beat your bitch." I don't approve this message, but my my we'd have less sweetie types. Yeah, not true. You know what's yo yo big up big up big up Joe from MIA. You know what's funny about that, Assad? I think right. In general. These guys put way too much value and self-worth in the girls that they smash. It's a big deal for them. It's a big part of their identity. So it makes sense that when somebody else takes what they think is quote-unquote theirs, they flip out and go crazy. I don't agree with it, but I think that's what basically happens. Um, so in this particular case, the easiest thing to kind of avoid all this shit is just to kind of treat interactions you have with girls, especially in the industry, as exactly what they are and not have it, you know, not have this sense of possession, not have it tied to your ego. It doesn't really matter. Do you know what I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Like, because clearly Sweetie doesn't give a shit about it. She's clearly smashing all these guys, knowing the confidence they have, not really giving a fuck because it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. Like, you know, they've all moved on. They've all had plenty of boyfriends and girlfriends in between hookups and shit. It's like, why are you worried about this thing that happened ages ago? If especially with somebody that you're, you know, you broke up with and you ended on bad terms, especially with Quavo, it's like, why would, why do you fucking give a shit? But, you know, there's a strange thing in hip hop. Like hip hop is like one of my favorite genres, obviously, but it's weirdly like homo. It's really, it's weirdly homophobic, but they weirdly do strange homophobic things. Like, they all care about who each other fucks a lot. A lot. <laughs> you know? Like, how are you guys so homophobic, but then you, you know, you're worried about where another guy is sticking his dick? Like, who gives a fuck? Like, grow up. These are grown men. Especially the ones who have, like, baby mothers, and then they move on. It's like, why are you bothered? Like, you clearly didn't want this person. You clearly didn't take any responsibility in terms of, you know, taking care of them or, you know, making them feel like they're needed. Now they've moved on suddenly now you want them back it's like bruh like let people live man like this possessive controlling type of shit is just weird and bizarre but to be fair to the guys i don't blame them because i think the women play into it there's a weird relationship where they kind of all like it they kind of like to be feeling like they're being chased they want to feel like they're in demand feel like they're you know whatever they're a hot girl hot whatever but with that hot girl label comes all this nonsense in it where people are now finding out that you might be a bit of a slag, so it's not the greatest thing for everybody involved, to be completely fair. Everyone comes out of this this looking bad, but you know, it's still entertaining. Night night, that's to the fed. Show me that I'm tender, bitch. Trying to prove what you just said. R.I.P. take off, he the only real one that got true respect. Crazy how when he died, everybody really wished it was you instead. Can you imagine saying that to somebody? There has to be a little bit of decorum when it comes to the dead, to be fair. That's fucking wild. To say that everybody wished Quaver was dead instead of fucking Takeoff is fucking insane. 
But also, this should be the one where, like, I think the other day, wasn't Offset the other day trying to fight some kid who did, like, a, I don't know, I think he was, he got at him or something. I think he was DMing him or something. Some kid online dressed up as Takeoff or something, did some skit, and Takeoff wasn't too happy about it. No, Offset wasn't too happy about it. So these guys like to act like, you know, they're the protectors of Takeoff's legacy. And anybody saying anything bad about him, they spaz out. So I'll, let's see what happens. Because he said some fucking crazy shit about Takeoff. So if what they say about him is true, if how they act, you know, in his honour is true, then Chris Brown Day should be numbered, really. Because that is a wild line. That is an insane line. I have to repeat that one more time. I was like, when I heard it the first time, I was like, God damn. Your last album was a weed tray, just some bullshit that we roll up on. You know what's on. Your last album was a weed tray. I didn't even notice that. Your last album was a weed tray. Back, I'm gonna need more than one. Uh -huh. Your last album was a weed tray, just some bullshit that we roll up on. You know what's on. Put you to bed. Night, night, that's suit of fit. Show me that I'm tender, bitch. Time to prove what you just said. RIP, take off. He the only real one that got true respect. Crazy how when he died, everybody really wished it was you instead. Oh, shit. You tripping, Chris. Don't say that. Don't lose your head. Damn. You done turned a big bad wolf on these fuck. Niggas never knew revenge. This what happens when a fuck nigga push a real nigga out to the edge. This what happens when a dumb nigga get fame and it get to his head. You gon' kiss this ring, nigga. Big fuck you from my middle finger. I tattoo my trigger finger. Bring real beat to your dinner table. My mental state ain't never stable. I know this shit gon' sting, nigga. I ran your ass through the ringer, nigga. You just got body by a singer, nigga. Bitch. Who wanna smoke with me? Who wanna smoke with me? Who wanna smoke with me? Who wanna smoke with C? Who wanna, mm. Who wanna smoke with me? Who wanna to be fair, he destroyed him. I'm really wishing for a reply back from Quaver. We need that shit hard. We need that shit hard. So big up Quaver. Please come back. Please, Quaver, um, come back and fucking, you know, get your, return your fucking crown and show Chris Brown wild one. But so far, so good from Chris Brown. So far, so good from fucking Chris freaking Brown. Quickly, this one before we continue here. Let's see. This one is like um long but funny. You guys are fucking idiots. Let's see this. Let's check this out. This is a long but funny video. Allegedly long but funny. Let's see what the deal is on this one. I'm curious. You can't bank on the teachers and the staff taking care of it. <laughs> It's him. Batmobile. <laughs> I think this is Brendan Shaw. And he gets out of it. Where's your dad? <laughs> Where's your dad? <laughs> the mask is it's all clear. torn. And like, Where's, your dad? <laughs> Where's your dad? <laughs> Does he realize that they're laughing at him, by the way? Hmm. Does he realize that they're laughing at him? Does he realize they're laughing at him or is he trying to join in with the laughs and hmm? <laughs> the fucking mask is like, where is your dad? We just see your dad right now. Mr. Shaw, this is, I'm not Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Prove it. Pro <laughs> oh my God. No, Prove it. it. It looks like it. There, look at the look at the picture. It's a side by side. I don't go online. <laughs> it's Brendan Shaw. There's too many haters. <laughs> That's funny. That's fucking funny. That is funny. I'm not gonna lie. Eric did a very rare funny movement. That was actually funny. That was actually funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god! No, it's clearly you. You keep misspelling things, and <laughs> pronouncing things. Nah, don't join in and try and make it funny. We're not. We're not laughing at what you're saying. We're laughing at your friends taking the piss out of you. Don't try and join in. You're pronouncing things. <laughs> oh look now he's not happy in it now he doesn't like it he doesn't like it now he doesn't like it look his face he doesn't like it it got real these pictures of on the internet came up it got real and he does not like it Papa's face is a sight here he's also probably looking at the other thumb oh my god look at the look at the other thumbnail Look at the other look at the other picture on the thing. 2011, 21, and 23. It's got him melted. <laughs> it's got him melted. Oh my god. Was it was it is that what's 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 the Google search? Is it Brendan Shaw mask? 
Brendan Shaw, is it Mask? What what what's what is that? Yeah, it is. Yeah, look, that's the picture he saw. You probably saw this and <laughs> he got upset. <laughs> he saw this picture. By the way, though, by the way, by the way, I know we all age, but fucking hell. Look at where Brendan went to go. Look how he looks. Look at the difference in how he looks. Look at how he looks in the UFC to, compared to 2021. 2021. God almighty, bro. Wow. Yeah, he saw this picture and he was nervous because all the other pictures. Oh, what was this one? My stand up is worse than my stand up. Oh my God. My stand up is worse than my stand up. <laughs> As a mask. <sighs> oh my God. That is so mean. My stand up is worse than my stand up. It's fucking hilarious. Oh my god, please give me more. Please give me more. That was fucking gorgeous. <laughs> oh, by the way, have you guys noticed? Papa stopped talking about Coach Prime, innit? Look at this tweet. That's my coach. Papa has stopped talking about Coach Prime. Suddenly, Coach Prime doesn't exist anymore, does he? What happened to all that? What happened to Colorado Strong? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened, bro? No more fucking Coach Prime talk. Yo, big up Uche. What's good? What's good, Koyla? What's happening? What's happening? Big up Jared Millerick in the house. What's happening, my people? What's happening? Oh, this is fucking hilarious, man. Brendan's face changed so quickly when you saw that when you saw the fucking screen. He's probably gonna have a word with Chin about bringing up stuff without him telling him. Let's go back one bit again. That was really good. His face completely changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, Bro. move it. Is it. It looks like it. There, look at the look at the picture. It's a side by side. I don't go online. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brendan Shaw. There's too many haters. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Oh my god! No, it's clearly you. You keep misspelling things and <laughs> pronouncing things. Ah! Uh, <laughs> 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 it looks just like you. <laughs> <laughs> what you look? What the glasses? I have too many ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh fuck! I don't oh. go online. I have too many. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> did Brendan only get it now? Is he? Did he only understand the joke? Why is he laughing so much? Hard? Why is he laughing so hard now? Did he understand it the first time? Fucking Eric Griffin said it, or is he just trying to copy and jump into the fucking laughing hype? He just realized what Eric said now. Like it just clicked. <laughs> That would be a good clip. <laughs> you guys are fucking idiots. Nah. Oh shit, dude. It just has... It just says Shab. <laughs> <laughs> it says fucking Shab on your thing. <laughs> Where's your dad? <laughs> They're really laughing at him, you know? Chris is absolutely laughing at him. Like he's, I've never seen him laugh at this. He's actually laughing at him. You can't believe it. Like, look at my life. This is pure comedy. I was once at the top of the hill. I was once destined for Netflix greatness. I was neck. I was on the cusp of, you know, um, I was on the cusp of fucking Hollywood glory. Golden Globes were in my future. Emmys were in my future. Oscars maybe were in my future. And now look at me. I'm depending on this guy who literally we're laughing at, and he doesn't. He doesn't even get that we're laughing at him. He's just awkwardly repeating the same jokes that we're making about him at his expense, trying to make himself feel better. That is comedy. That is comedy, as Mark Norman would say. It just has. <laughs> it just says Shab. <laughs> <laughs> it says fucking Shab on your thing. <laughs> Where's your dad? <laughs> are fucking idiots yeah that hurt that kind of stung i've always wondered this about him like that's the part where it's like this is that's one if there's one thing that can always prove that brendan is never destined to be a stand-up comedian 
is his inability to like be the butt of the jokes. Like he doesn't play. That's just the one thing to give to give Brian Callen some credit. Even though he's a fucking cuck, he does play his role well comedically. He's always willing to be the butt of the joke. He doesn't mind being a whipping boy. Brendan doesn't. Brendan seems very uncomfortable with it. Like when people start, like he seems to like get really like, okay, now you've gone too far. He's that kind of guy. Hey guys, you want to relax now? You know what I mean? He doesn't, he, he, and, and I think as a comedian, you need to have that ability to be able to take jokes, you know? Um, but he doesn't take them at all well. Do you remember when he complained to Rogan that time about somebody? Who did he complain about Rogan to? Was it about Eric Griffin? No, I think, was it, or somebody, I forgot, or Bill Burr or something. He complained to Rogan about Bill Burr or someone like that, like, and Rogan had to tell him, you're a fucking comedian. This is what comedians do. We bust each other's balls, like, relax. He fucking ran to Daddy Rogan and told him, someone's picking on me. You know, getting picked on. This is what it is to be a comedian. We all fucking razz each other. We all fucking diss each other. We all rinse each other. It's all part and parcel of it. It'll kind of build, you know, it'll, it'll make you have thicker skin and develop your ability to fire back and clap back. But he doesn't like it. Papa doesn't like it. He was not happy at all. He was not happy at all. Next, we've got this great clip featuring the one and only, the fantastic, the supreme, John fucking Stewart, giving a fucking lesson giving a fucking Grammy award winning performance on why the whole council culture thing, council culture thing is so fucking lame. And I think this specifically applies to comedians. Um, but yeah, I'll let John Stewart basically eviscerate the whole council culture thing because he's fucking awesome. Love John Stewart. A lot of voices now, John are, are like Bill Maher, for example, when it comes to the culture wars, he's, he expresses his frustration over and over again. I can't say this. We're limited in saying that. You mm -hmm. have to wear a gag and th this kind of expression. Comedians right, are talking all, all the time about, well, I, can't, I, I feel I can't do this. I can't say that. No. I, listen, where, where, how do you come down on this? On this about cancel yeah. culture. Here's, yeah. here's a nice absurdity. Okay. People that talk about cancel culture never seem to shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> like there's more speech now than ever before. Exactly. It's not, you can't say it's that when you say it, look, the internet has democratized criticism. What do we do for a living? We talk shit. Mm. We criticize, we postulate, we opine, we make jokes. And now other people are having their say. Mm -hmm. And that's not cancel culture. Mm -hmm. That's relentlessness. We live in relentless culture. And the system of the internet and all those other things are incentivized to find the pressure points of that and exacerbate it. He's right. He's right. I've always detested it because I think, if anything, I think these comedians are a lot smarter than what they lead on. I think they recognized pretty early on when they were all getting cancelled that it was all beneficial to their careers, especially because think about it. Most stand-up comedians, especially the ones on podcasts, it's not as if they got Hollywood careers anyway. The most the ones that do don't get on pods and speak all the time because it'll get them in trouble. So the cancel culture thing they were talking about was never going to affect them because cancel culture, especially in the beginning, it almost felt like, a way to kind of reputationally damage people who couldn't be fired or really hurt in any way. Like, I think I, I, I kind of mix cancel culture and Me Too a little bit together, which they shouldn't be mixed together, but they kind of serve the purpose in that if you were, if you were like were disregarded, if you were like, mal you know, ill-treated or sorry, mistreated by somebody, especially in the industry, and you felt as if like you were silenced and you couldn't say something and you then you wrote, you written an op-ed about it in the Washington Post, that quote unquote cancel culture thing was one of your ways to kind of get back on that, get back, to, you know, exact revenge on that person for what they did to you. But then of course people weaponized it and it got really crazy and people started to cancel each other for nonsense, right? Or because they didn't return an email or something, nonsense things, but it did serve a mechanism. Then over, over time, people started to cancel people for what they said, like having the wrong opinion, quote unquote, which is proper 1984 shit, right? Um, but even that became weaponized on both sides people would punish you and slap you on the wrist for not saying the right thing or not having the right opinions but then on the other side people realized that if they went out of their way to say the quote-unquote wrong thing just to be a contrarian just to fucking stoke the flames it could serve them well 
it gives them attention it makes them noteworthy it puts them in a new cycle i think we saw it towards kanye's end when kanye was going through that hitler phase he will he, he clearly recognized the more he started saying the wrong thing the more people started wanting to talk to him he kept saying the quote-unquote wrong thing they kept wanting to talk to him he kept saying the wrong thing he kept getting interviews he kept getting fucking he was on all these fucking news channels he was a talk of the town he was i mean it's a constant thing that they kind of feed into but the comedians realize it's early on that hey if i use this to my advantage if i say i'm being silenced if I say this network didn't want to put my joke in or this joke was too risky for this platform, they're trying to cancel me, da, 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 da. it works to my favour because, you know, they kind of purport themselves to be fucking bastions of free speech, you know, um, what you call it, um, the fucking voice of the people, all this sort of nonsense they kind of bash themselves on. And if your fans are kind of dense and don't really look into it too much, they might also agree. So it kind of adds to the narrative, it adds to the law, it adds to the myth. And obviously they kind of bank it, they kind of bank it and get fucking successful from it. So um, a lot of them are full of shit, and I'm glad it's I'm glad it's kind of done now. It's almost settled down now. I don't think people, number one, aren't really trying to cancel each other as bad as they were in the past, and comedians also aren't using it as a fucking thing to promote themselves with because that was the most annoying thing ever. Honestly, it was like everybody was turning into fucking free speech absolutists and you know um what you call it scholars and philosophers and it's like bruh no please all this is just so you can sell tickets you don't care about free speech um you don't care anything about you don't really care about the culture war you're just jumping on it because it gives you something to talk about and it puts you in a new cycle get fucked get back on stage and dance like a clown and make us laugh like you should do like you fucking should do but you guys saying yeah, John Stewart's aging well, is and yeah, for sure, cause for sure, Uche. John Stewart looks fucking brilliant. John Stewart looks fucking brilliant for a white dude who reports on the news and sees a lot of horrible shit. He looks fucking good. Let's be fair, because that sort of job should age you horribly. But I wonder if that break he took when he left his show. I wonder if that break he took was a was a key. Take that break and you know look after yourself, hang out with your family, partner, whatever you're doing. And then come back later. I think maybe that break was probably beneficial. Who knows? But yeah, he looks really good. Maybe he just drinks his water. You know, that's probably it. Uh, like Bill Murray is funny in every way besides when he's trying to be funny. Exactly. Stavros always says comics can joke about any topic if they make it funny. The comic, they complain about the ones I don't. Exactly, Uche. Or the ones that complain about it are the ones that are trying to complain about it to get more promotion. So even if the, even if the joke is funny or not funny, they complain about it just so people can talk about the joke. Because nowadays... Think about it this for this way. Think about it this way. This is how bad stand-up comedy is. Nowadays, people's jokes don't even get spread like that anymore. Do you remember before in the past where a comedian would have like a joke that would be very insightful, that would that would uh, that would I don't know pose interesting questions, that would have you thinking differently about the way you saw the world, and that would become a thing like a like it would be a talking point. Nowadays, people's jokes are number one not funny, and number two not even talking points. So they have to create some drama around them to fucking make people care, you know, pay attention. But I can't really think of a lot of people who actually have jokes that are funny and people kind of talk about them. It becomes like a talking point. Oh, did you hear this person's joke? It's like, well, I always think back to the the legendary joke that I love the most is fucking Louis C.K.'s pedophile joke, right? The one where he says, oh, if pedophilia was so bad, why do people keep doing it? It must be really good type of thing. I'm obviously butchering it, but that's kind of the premise of the joke. And I remember that was a conversation piece in the timeline for a while. Like, you know, how funny that was, how wrong it was, the question it posed. You know, people started to have actual debates around it. Like, people don't do that anymore because the com the caliber of comedians that we have out now are fucking garbage, number one. And also, they don't really say anything worth worthwhile, you know? That's why it always used to make me laugh whenever Brendan and Brian would be worried about being cancelled. It's like, bro, why are you two worried about being cancelled you guys don't say anything of any note at all you both ride the fence you don't really have any opinions that aren't something you've heard on fucking rogan or patrick bent davis podcast you, you know what i mean no one's gonna cancel you you have no original thoughts you know what i mean no one's no you're right don't worry no one's gonna come after you guys no one's gonna come after you but again what do i know this clip is fucking wild have you guys seen this clip it's going viral on reddit it's just something i've seen now um, the title is Guy harasses a woman at the gym. When she rejects him, he tosses her. And I was thinking to myself, like, fellas, have you ever felt like this before? 
had, has there ever been an occasion in your life where a woman's rejected you and you're like, you know what? Be gone with you, man. Be gone with you. Maybe, innit? Maybe all guys have this kind of rage in them. When a girl turns you down, you're like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. Maybe we all have that rage in us somewhere. Maybe. They're talking to the till, she's holding a coffee. Look at you. Look. She says, no, fuck off. <laughs> He just flings her on the floor for no reason. Yo, this guy, this is this is this is some BGL shit. This is some BGL shit, bro. This is some BGL shit. Look at that. He sends her flying, bro. And she bangs her head on the side of the wall as well. By the way. Is there, is there, is there, is there another, there must be, there must be a horrible, what, you know what's a really underrated horrible job? Being a barista inside of a fucking gym, especially one filled with fucking roid heads. Can you imagine the amount of shit you see and you don't want to intervene because these guys are all fucking huge. They might squeeze your head like a fucking, you know, like a peanut. She has to just mind her business. You get them freaking out. You get them in a good mood. Yeah, you know I mean, like it's just it must be horrible having to deal with all of these male hormones all over the place. It's a very underrated shit job working as a barista in a in a fucking gym. It must be one of the worst jobs ever in one way because you see so much fuck shit. You can't really get involved. The guys come in sometimes on their reds, not on their reds, and then you see literal physical, you know, assaults in front of you, and all you can do is call the police. Or if you call the police, you might die. <laughs> This guy, this guy could throw a dumbbell at your head. You know what I mean? You never know what you could do. It's a very underrated, very, very, very underrated bad job working as a fucking barista in a fucking gym. I'd fucking hate that. But um, yeah, hope that woman's okay, man. One of the weird things about women, women, so women interaction with men is this, and like on any given day, you could have a number of people coming up to you trying to say hi. Most of the time, you know, it's innocent enough, right? Like, maybe there's, I know there's an argument for some women out there who are like, just don't talk to me ever. Right? Leave leave people alone. They're strangers. But obviously, you know, to be sensible, adults, you know, how else are you going to meet people if you're not saying hi to them? Saying hi to strangers. So, whatever. But regardless, most women's interaction with men they don't know is usually harmless. It might be still annoying. It might be a bit unsettling, but it's usually physically harmless. But there's always that one time that you might bump into a complete loony and you have no idea when it could be. It could be your bus driver. It could be a bus driver. It could be a fellow gym goer. It could be some guy you're walking in on the way to the office with. It could be anybody. You have to really be on your P's and Q's. That's why probably that's why probably most women in general have way, way better perception and have way better fucking foresight than men do because you always have to keep an eye on danger because you're a woman too right no matter how big you are a guy's always going to overpower you so you always have to keep your wits about you to avoid any fucking danger it must be kind of wild i'm not gonna lie <laughs> it must be a quite a wild existence like having to worry like like this all the time having to always be on attention because especially for a woman that's like conventionally attractive because all girls get attention right no matter how ugly or fat they are they all get attention but the more, you know, the way nicer you get looking wise, the the more scary it gets because you can't really control what someone else is going to do. You know, you can maybe try and avoid eye contact. You can do anything you want. Turn your body, avoid eye contact. You know what? I've heard I've heard of girls going to the gym with a fake ring on, like pretending they're married and shit. That doesn't stop some psychos, bro. Some guys, just, that, that, that just gives them a, a higher target to aim for. <laughs> yeah, what's the big up Uche? Classic is when you curve a dude that's trying to cat call. Next thing you know, he's following you, yelling you, you're an ugly bitch. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> you know, hey, blonde, hey, blue dress, hey, black hat, hey, Serena. Yeah, imagine, imagine that some guy calling you, <laughs> like you're on the street. Hey, Serena. Serena, what? What? You should... 
<laughs> Beyonce. Like, and then he said no, and he starts calling you fucking. He starts shouting to you, Lizzo. Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> you just called me Beyonce a minute ago. Now you're calling me Lizzo. Make your mind up, bro. Make your mind up. Oh, fucking hell, man. Absolute psycho machine, that guy is. Absolute psycho machine. Um. Da, da, da. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, you remember this video? Sam Tripoli says Chris Alea and Brian Callan got cancelled as a way to get to Rogan. I love this period of time. I enjoy this era. This era where all the comedians were worried that they were coming next. Do you remember that? When Callan and Chris... That's the underrated part of the stand-up comedy lore. When Brian Callan and Chris Alea, or Chris Alea and Brian Callan got cancelled in order, it was actually funnier, the stuff that was happening around them. Because then everyone started to get really worried. Everyone's had to get really scared that they were going to be next. Because I remember that woman who wrote the article on Brian, basically it was suggested, I think, he, I think it was by Joey Diaz. He's the one that probably put it out there that she was writing this massive piece on all comedy, but it didn't go through. I don't know why. I imagine it didn't go through because I have a theory that it didn't go through because some comedians reached out to some like waitresses and was like, hey, this is going to kill us, bro. Don't expose this, please. And they all kind of recounted their stories or something because that was that was it. There was meant to be like a big takedown piece that never materialized. And we only really got the biggest casualties, obviously, casualties, sorry, were obviously Brian Callan and, and Chris. But it was funny, man. Everyone was really scared that they were going to be next. I get no pussy off my act because you don't smile. Okay. I'm telling you, bro. You don't smile. But also bro. I'm up there talking about... How I've been to prison. I'm talking about my sex what? addiction. Dude, I'm talking about. I'm telling you, yeah. There's got to be some freaks out yeah, there. Yeah, but that you, love you're it, not going to get everybody. You, do you want that? I th I think the guys that went to get all the girls all got canceled, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they did. it just they did. They it's did. just. I love how they're trying to say that Brian Cannon and Chris only got canceled because they fuck a lot. No, it's not that. Like this is the one of those things. I think that people say the same thing about Andrew Tate and those guys, right? They're only getting in trouble because they're like players. It's like. There's plenty of guys out there that play the field who are quote unquote fuckboys who don't get accused of rape and who don't get accused of messaging or being in sexual relations with underage girls. Plenty of guys that do that. So to suggest that it was, oh, because they're sexually promiscuous, that's why they got taken down is fucking insane. We know a few of them. Yeah, and we know a lot you, of them. You do a podcast with it's one It's just <laughs> unbelievable, dude. These guys literally fucked too many chicks and they got canceled for dropping dick on everybody. That it's not a good thing, though. If you've got wife and kids, why are you dropping dick so much anyway? There needs to come a point where all men should just give up and hang it up, right? There needs to be a time. I don't know when it is, what age it is, but some people would argue it's like when you have kids, you should kind of like chill out, especially if you're still with the mother of your children. But these guys seem to be, they, they, they're almost, these white guys are like, they're kind of like black guys, isn't it? Comedians. Comedian white guys are kind of like black hip hop artists in a way. Where like, they let the, they love the fame and the fame gets them to bang. Like maybe that's a part of the process. It's like, because you're a comedian, more than like if you're a comedian, you're a bit of an outcast when you're younger, right? So you're, you're a bit of a loner, maybe. Then when you become famous, especially in your mid-30s, early 40s, you start getting all these like adult women coming after you. And it must be an odd feeling. If you're like an, a regular dude, right? A regular dude who didn't get any pussy before. And then now you're having like women that you don't know all over the world DMing you, sending you fucking peach emojis and shit and aubergines right and um drooling face emojis and heart eye emojis and kissing emojis and eyes emojis it can be hard to turn down even when you're sitting next to your wife even when you're playing catch with your kid at the, at, in the garden <laughs> it could be hard to turn down you go perform at a comedy bar a comedy club sorry and the waitress comes and gives you a drink and she gives you the glass and she kind of like drags her hand over your hand as she's giving you the glass you're like, hold on, is this 25-year-old <laughs> giving me a sign as she wants to search? Imagine you're an old, like, you're like 50. How are you going to turn that down? How? How? 
<laughs> this 25 year old covered in tattoos right with dark hair and like you know nail polish and shit and biker boots is like dragging her hand over your hand as she gives you your fucking jack d and coke and calling you big boy hey big boy great set tonight <laughs> i'm thinking of getting to comedy you want to help a girl out <laughs> um, was that was listening to uh people on a pod people on a pod describe a comic with special needs who said the n-word in his joke and a few days later saw a clip of triple e <laughs> special needs triple e is fucking hilarious He's a really good example of somebody that fucked his brain with drugs and booze, almost com- guaranteed. He's somebody that I could believe probably didn't have any issues growing up and then just went full pelt on the meth, allegedly. And then, you know, this is where he ended up. Like, that's, that, that, that is proof that you can fuck up your brain with drugs. You know all your parents used to always say to you? I oh, don't smoke weed because it's going to... Like, Sam Tripoli's proof if you do too much hard drugs, like, it can permanently re- rewire your brain. That's it. That's it. Can you imagine Gene Simmons today? A rock star apologizing, saying, dude, I am so sorry. That's the one thing I wish I could have said. Never. That's the one rule I called Tony Hinchcliffe. I go, don't like, no matter what you do, do not apologize. You call him the day after that happened. I go, I I go, listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. You listen to me on this other shit. Do not apologize. Never apologize. Did ever tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But you should apologize if you get accused. No, no, hold on. If you didn't do it, but never apologizing when somebody accuses you of rape is kind of wild. You should at least address it. That's what I'm saying. I'm kind of warming to this because some people in my comments have been saying, oh, you're too hard on Brian. There was no evidence I did what you said. I'm just saying, if I was, if me, if I, if me, if I was accused of something like that, I would not wait. I would not pause. I will take every chance I can to scream from the rooftops that I didn't do it and to provide some evidence that I didn't do it or just to provide a counter narrative to how I did not do it. The fact that they didn't do it is a bit of an issue for me. You know, that's an issue. That's a bit of an issue. That's a bit of an issue. No real defense apart from, trust me, bro, that's not enough. Wait two to three weeks and it will be over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but well, Callan was that was a good thing he did. I thought. What when at when am when the, when that shit came down? He yeah, was like, I he, didn't do it. Didn't what the fuck it. are you talking about? He literally if didn't. You know, Callan. You know that's not the only people that thought he did it are fucking people not happy with their lives. Yeah, and that's it. People that like want to like be friends with Judd Apatow. Yeah, that's who thought he did it. You yeah. know what I mean? What? <laughs> Uh, I don't think Callan dealt with it well at all. Remember Callan said he was going to do a podcast, like a special podcast. And then I think my theory is that it wasn't Brendan that canceled that special emergency podcast. It was their sponsors. None of their sponsors wanted that on their fucking shit. They didn't want to, you know, be advertising, whether they're advertising and then having Callan ranting or raving about not raping somebody. I don't think it was Brendan. Brendan didn't cancel it. Or maybe Brendan canceled on behalf of the sponsors, but I think the sponsors were the main ones. But yeah, like, I don't think Brennan dealt with it well at all. Brian didn't deal with it well at all. He didn't deal with it well at all. If anything, the way Brian acted was more guilty. He came across more guilty than, the, you know, than anything, to be fair. Disappearing from the podcast, you know, aligning himself with, what's, your, what's that thing called? That that um, Stephen Crowder guy. It all seemed like a weird, that was that, that's a like textbook way you know, grifters who get accused of heinous crimes go. You know what I mean? When they get cancelled, it's always a right-wing grift. It's always fucking embracing fucking Christianity. It's always talking about fucking, you know, um, culture war topics. It's the same fucking routine. I don't know. So, you got fat fuck Amy Schumer yeah. calling him out. And the reason, listen, she got nothing. I'm on to here. Those guys got taken out because it was a mob hit on Rogan. They couldn't take out Rogan, so they took out his soldiers. It's old mo- That's What a stupid fucking guy. The title of that last episode was If I Diddled It. 
Oh really? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. If I did it, yeah, exactly. If I did it, it's fucking amazing. Big up Enjoy Ranger, appreciate you. Well one guy. Yeah, big up Josie. Callan was still touring that year. He took off. He was doing clubs he never heard of in cities that don't matter. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mob it shit. Totally. That's what they do. Right. They use the Leah to get right. to everybody. When I saw them going after Coco Dia, I go, oh, this isn't even about anything. This is about them. No, to be fair, though, the, the Rogan cancellation was another one that was probably you could attribute to conspiracy because that was a clear effort to just get him off, to just sort of like cancel him because they didn't like his platform. They didn't like the things he spoke about. They didn't like maybe his guest, his views on certain things. They used the ivermectin thing as just an excuse to get him out of the paint. But obviously he survived. But that was obviously one that was a clear, okay, cool. Let's take this fucking guy out. What's he talking about? He's not a fan of the vaccine. He's, he's promoting this fucking horse shit. Let's try and get him out. And it didn't work because, you know, they told too many lies about COVID. So Rogan seemed like the sane one in that weird, you know, time of the year. I'm trying to clip Rogan's guys. Right, right, right. Because right. they've been... You know, it's funny though. Rogan clipped his own guys because he doesn't hang out with those guys anymore. So that's the funny thing. He's saying the media, the mainstream media, the fucking, the cabal, whoever these people are, right? These shadowy figures, they try to clip Rogan's friends. Rogan clips his own friends. He doesn't hang out with these guys anymore. Been trying to take him out because he was too powerful. Right. He's more powerful than any other thing they right. couldn't control. He wouldn't let them put on Elizabeth Warren or any of these other right. fucking right. bitches. Uh -huh. So they wanted to take him out. Right, right. Like, if you know Brian Callen, like, as crazy as that guy is, he f he's a gentleman, dude. Mm -hmm. He really... He, yeah. He, as if you can vouch for any person that you know not to rape somebody. You just don't comment on it, innit? Like, if you don't know what you're talking about, just don't comment on it. You can never vouch. You never know what people get up to behind closed doors. You can't say with any certainty that anybody that you know didn't do X, Y, Z. You have no idea. You weren't there. But, you know, what do I know? Let's continue on. This is a funny uh, picture somebody put on the fucking Fire and the Kids subreddit. Look at this collage. The title is Baffling How One Human Can Be So Awful at Everything They've Ever Tried. It's actually kind of true. I'm not going to lie. It's actually kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to him the one thing that brendan was quite successful at oddly enough was stand-up but unfortunately he doesn't really care about stand-up as a craft outside of or as an art form outside of making money that's why he quit but if he would have stayed doing it he would have been fine look at the guys and girls we see on kill tony brian's more than able more than worthy of still having a stand-up comedy career if there's if those guys and girls that go and kill tony every week can count call themselves stand-ups so can brendan he's not as he's not worse than those guys honestly i've seen people on kill tony who are far worse than him who've been doing it longer or as long as him the sneakerhead thing was well, it's just a, to be fair that's more of an that's more of a that's more of a like a baked in identity of la it feels like all the guys in la who are like of a certain age they happen to all like sneakers it's one of their things it's like either sneakers or watches and it's all the obvious shit as well. It's never like cool stuff. Um, the car thing is fucking hilarious. Not going to lie. Mostly because he started off being a luxury sports car guy, right? And I'm assuming, again, this is just me assuming. Don't kill me. I'm assuming because his success in podcasts decided to dwindle, he wasn't making as much money as he was in the past. So he had to kind of change his taste in cars to accommodate his, you know, to, to be in line with his budget, which is why now he's into American, you know, made, quote unquote, pickup trucks and shit. Um, because they're technically, even though he's doing a lot of mods in them and they're still getting expensive, I'd imagine by, in gen, by, by and large, his selection of cars he has now is far cheaper value-wise than stuff he had before. He had G-Wagons, Lamborghini, Urises, Ferraris, Porsches, all that stuff is way more, even if you're doing it on finance than just buying a pickup truck, do you know what I mean? Um, and buying a fucking Bronco, which I think he sold. Um, the podcasting thing, I think he's, he's done pretty well at because that's, the one bit, that's been the one constant, the podcast. Although he's terrible at it, the podcast he's done pretty well at, to be fair, because despite Brendan being absolutely redacted, the fact that he gets paid to speak is pretty impressive. Let's be, let's be fair. The guy can't pronounce the most basic of words English is his first language and he always speaks like he's just been concussed. 
You know what I mean? It's fucking wild. To be completely honest, it's absolutely wild. The UFC thing is the saddest thing because if you watch UFC, if if Brendan fought nowadays in heavyweight, he would get flatlined a lot. That's a real crazy thing. Even though he was still decent, I don't think he was that bad. People made it seem as. When you actually think about it, though, if Brendan was to fight in this roster of people that are currently on the fucking UFC roster, he would get starched, like, week in, week out. You know, that's the real scary part. That's the real scary part about it. Like, he wasn't as bad as people make out, but if he did fight nowadays, oh, my God, it would be fucking... Oh, I've got to stop repeating myself because people don't like how I repeat myself. But let's continue. There's, and in the football is probably the saddest one because I think of all of these things that he got involved in, I think football was his true, true love. I think I think the fact that he didn't make it in football actually affected his love of the game. He doesn't even talk about it as much. He doesn't really go into games as much. He doesn't really talk about tactics or what do you know what I mean? I think the fact that he never made it in football actually made him fall out of love with the game. And the way it happened too, right? I think he he always shows he always he always shares that story about being I think in the practice squad and they they didn't put his name right on the shirt or something. Do you remember? Like I think he mentioned something about that. Like, something about his name was wrong on the shirt or something. And obviously that was a bad omen. He ended up getting cut afterwards. But I think the football thing was his real true love that he never really worked out on. And that's probably something that he probably still hasn't ever got over, to be fair. That was his whole identity. And he probably would have seen himself being an ESPN anchor afterwards, you know, being a talking head, whatever, right? And it never worked out. And then he had to do all these other things to make up for that one dream. You know, that one dream in the beginning. That's my conclusion there. Oh my God, Uche, DJ Face. No, 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 no. I predict, I don't predict DJ Face. I, pre I predict, I predict, is it Traeger? Tra is it, how you it? Is it, how you spell Traeger? Is it Traeger? There you go, Traeger, yeah. I predict the next grift is going to be Traeger Grills. He's going to become one of those grill dad guys. For sure. Slow cook this, slow cook that. That's my next prediction. Somewhere along that kind of line. Not the DJ stuff. I think he's going to get into this shit. That's going to be the one he's going to get into. He's kind of in it now anyway. There's those steaks with those cheese on top of it. But I feel like he'll get super into this. This will be his next grift. He'll become a, he'll become a grill dad. Because <laughs> that ties in with the that ties in with the pickup trucks too. Right? Like that whole... um tailgating culture right is it tailgating culture is it tailgating culture is that what it's called tailgate yeah tailgate exactly tailgate party he'll probably try and get into this as well thick boy tailgate meetups or something i see this in his future i see this there's a black guy there wow there's a black guy uche look black people here doing tailgate stuff shit bruh Look at our brothers and sisters. Yay! Look at that. Shit, I didn't know there's black people that do this shit. That's fucking cool, man. Yay! Look at that. Big up them. Love to see it. Oy. <laughs> That's me and Uche. Me and Uche at the fucking tailgate party having a blast. <laughs> She's got a fan. Uh, I've got a coke, you know. We're getting turned. <laughs> we're getting turned. Oh, we're getting turned up. We're about to watch Burt Kreischer. That's what we're doing. We're out here about to watch Burt Kreischer and spit some bars. <laughs> oh fuck! But yeah, I predict that to be his next one. That's that that that's his next grift. Wow, look at the spreads, bro. Look at the spreads. This must be quite fun, though, isn't it? I'm looking at it. We don't have this in the UK. It's too cold here. It must be quite fun, isn't it? Look at that spread, bro. Corn, I see there. Sausage. Tater tats, probably somewhere there, too. That's a good fucking spread, isn't it? I ain't mad at it. Oh, look, another black dude. Hell yeah, man. Hell fucking yeah. Oof, that looks scrumptious, isn't it? And I trust him. Look at that face. Big round, happy face. Drinking while he's on the job. Those glasses on. I trust this man with my life. 
I trust this man with my fucking life. Whatever he gives me in a box, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. I'll eat that shit. Cool. Ooh. I see a baddie there, innit? A couple baddies. Oi, what's that? Look at that. I see it. Um, let's continue here. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Um, we did John Stewart. We did that. We did that. Oh, listen to this. Tor report. Tor report. Tor report. Tor report. So I don't know who told me to do this. Actually, I forgot. I wish I could shout you out. Somebody actually told me about this. Somebody. Somebody DM'd me and said, hey, you should check out Chris D'Elia's tour thing that he does. They are quite, they might be good for a reaction. And he, they've, they've been right so far. They've been right. So whoever you are, I appreciate you. Thank you for that suggestion because these things are fucking garbage, but they're good reaction bit content. So let's see this one. This is, a, this is one called Tour Report from Orlando. Let's see um, how Chris D'Elia gets on on tour with his, um, you know, with his team, with his merry men of comedians. It's so odd that the next bison <laughs> wannabe is going to feel it. Now, who's coming with me and who's going home? That's what he did in Street Fighter, the movie. Uh, no, I got it, yeah. 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 I, how did it's I know that? that? Because it's he's a doing guy oh, shit. Oh, there's a woman version of him. There's a woman version of that black guy that's fucking annoying and plays a token black guy. She's going to be the loud black woman. Hey, y'all, it's me, Cindy. Oh, no, no, um, Joe, what, what, what? What's a, what's a traditional black woman's name? Is it Orlando? Um, Gwyneth? What's a fucking southern black woman's name? What, is, what are you guys telling me? What's her name? Without us guessing her name. What's like a southern black woman name? Hey, y'all. Glad you could come along. Latrice. Latrice. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Barbara? Like... <sighs> Fuck. Bison. That son Nobody, of a bitch. I, I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass so bored that the next bison wannabe is going to feel it. No, who's coming with me and who's going home? It's the worst movie, but that was worth watching for that. Top 10 radar. Yeah, we worst movie. I thought he doesn't drink. I thought he doesn't drink, eh? I thought he doesn't drink. But that was worth watching for that. Top 10 radar. Yeah, we on your radar. Oh, he still. How the fuck does he still have so many girls? Look at the smiles, bro. Yo, Chris is still dicking these girls down, isn't it? Chris is still dicking these girls down. I don't know. I don't care what people say. Look at all the smiles. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. Look, look at them. They're all literally throbbing in the fucking punan for Chris. They're diddles. Chris Diddles is still out here. Schlanging dick, bro crazy man gets accused of being a pdf and he's still still scoring with the young ladies they're like i want to be next i want to go to your log cabin oh my god i want to go to your log cabin chris delia delia please i want to go to the cabin delia brand me delia Br delia i promise i won't share our snapchat look at that look at the smiles these are genuine no hands, by the way. Good job. Look at the smiles. Delia's still out here getting poons. Fair play, man. PDF Redemption Tour. Cajon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we on your radar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we on your radar. Look. <laughs> Chin would bring four boiled eggs, grape juice, and rotten fish he cooked. Oh, did you see that clip? Somebody posted a clip on the Find the Kids sub of Chin talking about. I need to. I need to find out what episode it was. There's a clip of the of Chin on the Find the Kids sub. Somebody clipped it, and he's talking about still eating some meat that a bird plucked out or something. He's like, "Yeah, a bird came and ate some of this, but we're still gonna eat it because he didn't eat the whole thing. He just cut the bit off." It's like what? Yeah, that guy's fucking wild. I'm gonna get Daniel Rack. I'm gonna get Tom Felton or Dan Rack to open for me when I do my Europe shows. What is going on? What is it? What, where are you from? Oh yeah. Okay, if when he, when and if he comes to Europe, 
I'm 100% coming to coming. I'm 100% I'm going to come for sure. I'm definitely going to be at the fucking London show. I swear on it. I swear. If he does do a European tour, I have to be there. And there's a strong possibility I may heckle. <laughs> there's a strong possibility I may go in there and just shout, Peter! Peter! There's a strong possibility that I just buy a £50 ticket just to go, Peter! And then get, cut, and then get chucked out. I would... That would be, I would be famous forever. Peter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, isn't that mantle? Are you a muggle? No, I'm just playing. All right. So uh, I was in uh, the Apple. Uche, man, have some faith in me, Uche. Have some faith in your boy. Have faith in me, man. I know I have a track record <laughs> of buying tickets and not going. I know there's plenty of evidence to show that I always buy, but I never go. And it, this, you know what's just funny? This extends even to raves. I'm embarrassed to show you guys my wallet, my iPhone wallet, because you'll see many and many events that happened that I haven't spoken about because I bought the tickets and I didn't go. So it does extend to a lot of things, you know? <laughs> other people in the chat could probably feel me i'm not the only one that does this i'm not the only one that does this that buys tickets and doesn't go i'm sure i'm not the only one that does this store the other day and uh what's going on there that place is like magic <laughs> <laughs> you download something off the internet for real what is this oh what's going on how is it going hello everybody Daniel Radcliffe here. I am doing my first comedy show. So anyway, I was at a coffee shop the other day and it's just like, what is this, mental? <laughs> what is going on? Never been with a girl and it's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, standing in line, mate. It's just like, come on. Uh. <laughs> fuck, take a number for, for fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, it's time to bring out the man of the hour, Chris <laughs> Yo, you want to get paid, don't you? You want to get paid, don't you? Don't worry, he's going to he's going to process your invoice. Don't worry. He's going to process your invoice. Relax. She's out here cackling in the back like he's fucking What the fuck is going on? Why don't you calm your bitch ass down, girl? Get yourself together. Stand up. Stand up. I'm not even mad at it. I would yeah. be thrilled. Yeah. That's you If there's one thing black people can do is compartmentalize. I know that face. If there's one thing black people can do is compartmentalize and be fake. Because I've done it before myself at work. If there's one thing black people know how to do brilliantly is to be fake and play the game. <laughs> yeah, you're so funny. What do you say? <laughs> you know, we can do that really well. She's fucking, she is, she's playing a fucking blinder, you know? She's got holiday to pay for, you know. She's got a car note to pay, kids to look after, family members, you know, like, hey, we're going to smile and laugh at the white man. Here we are, tour report in beautiful Orlando. And man, it's coming up on the holiday season. As you can see, the way they decorated with this beautiful Christmas tree, uh, winter's coming and burr, am I freezing? Orlando, beautiful Orlando, home of a lot of theme parks and also my comedy show tonight. Orlando. The outfits, huh? Of course, they pan the camera to a bunch of kids who look like they're literal kids. Of course, that's what they pictured. Of course. Let's pan the camera to the EDM crew. Right on brand. No IDs needed. Like power, gay Power Rangers. We in lobster. I don't like that I did that, but I did it, dude. I got crab fried rice, salmon, and lobster. Dude, this is like the Little Mermaid right here. I'm eating all sorts of sea stuff, but Orlando, we are here at the Phillips, Dr. Phillips Center or something. I don't know. It's also EDC. The first week since my special came out, chrislea.com. So I'm gonna. One of the worst specials I've ever watched in my entire life. One of the worst specials I've ever watched in my entire life. I, funnily enough, 
watching that special on this channel nearly got my channel nuked. <laughs> watching that special live on this channel nearly got my channel nuked so not only was it one of the worst ones it was also the ones that caused me the most hassle <laughs> brilliant i'm gonna be doing a lot of new stuff going over my set a little bit i got um i did a good show in detroit i did a bunch of new stuff so i'm trying to remember it i got it no no i got it i got it go ahead She spilled water and she's looking out for my safety. That's nice. So she's cleaning. Yo, this is coon behavior. This is like, this is definitely massa behavior. She's cleaning the water on the stage before Chris arrives. Yo, she definitely wants to make sure she gets paid. Fucking hell, woman. But if her boyfriend asks her to split the bill, she's going to fucking write a fucking op-ed about him on Twitter. You know, or get in front of a fucking camera on Instagram Live and start ranting about bitch-ass niggas. But she's here cleaning some white man's water on the floor. F figures. <laughs> now she just spread it out. Bro, man, she's got a massive ass, isn't it? No cap. <laughs> All forgiven, isn't it? I, can, I feel I forgive her. I feel I forgive her for being a fucking, you know, I feel I forgive her, you know. I think I might forgive her. I might forgive her for having a fucking bunda. I might forgive her for having an absolute wagon. <laughs> I think I forgive her. <laughs> she has got a, a ba 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 back off. <laughs> now she just spread it out. She just spread out the water. New stuff, new stuff, new stuff. It must be quite comforting, isn't it? Being a stand-up comedian because you can get literally cancelled and your life ruined because of what you've been accused of in Hollywood, but you still got this base of people who, to be fair, because being a stand-up, you're almost, it's part of your, like, it's, it's a weirdly, it kind of made him, in a weird way, more appealing to some fans because he had a bit of edge. Because Chris before was kind of boring. The no drinking thing, the no partying thing. You didn't really know much about his private life. He was kind of boring. I'm not going to lie. He was funny on pods, but he didn't have a lot of personality. You didn't know much about him. Then you find out all this sick shit he does, allegedly, and suddenly he becomes more interesting. You know, in a weird, again, not for me personally, you know, PDFs deserve to get burned alive, right? Or run over by countless trains. But to some people, they probably got more into him because of the allegations, because it made him sort of seem human in a way. You know? Exactly, Koyla. If you don't get cancelled, if you don't get cancelled, you're lame. Exactly. Maybe that kind of helped him. But still, it's a, it's a very privileged position to be in because all that work, I bet these guys must be thankful they spent more time doing stand-up than chasing fucking acting. Because all that work they did, going up to open mics, trying to get past at the store, getting their first special all that work they did paid off because when they got cancelled they had one thing they could fall back on that could make that could support them and keep the lights on stand-up comedy because if you would have if imagine if you would have quit stand-up and was like nah i quit i'm quitting after the m&m stuff i'm quitting stand-up i'm gonna go full full deep into this fucking acting thing i've got this project on the on the works that i'm working on where it's like a parody of eight mile imagine if he did that how pissed he would be if he if he if when he got cancelled. So it's quite a it's quite a good job in that respect because almost like a rapper. When a rapper goes to prison for like murder, yes it's bad, but if they're a street rapper, it kinda adds to their law, adds to their appeal. And if they can get out quickly, they can also capitalize on it. So I think the same thing with fucking comedians. The more fucked up shit they get into, the better it is for them, really. I can't think of one person who's kind of suffered because they got exposed because they're into some weird shit, you know? Even Andrew Huberman. 
I've always liked him, but I like him a bit more now that I found out that he fucking had six legit girlfriends on the go. You know what I mean? That kind of shit, like, it kind of humanizes you, makes you, you know, he's one of the lads. <laughs> you know he's he's optimizing himself so he can fuck a lot it kind of you know it all makes a lot of sense now i kind of like him more i'm rob i'm the sack guy oh rob yeah, right, thank you. who's that i'm the sack i'm the sack guy i'm the sack guy i'm ron i'm the sack guy he'd suck your dick what? i'm rob i'm the sack guy oh rob. i'm the sack guy he's a suck what do you say I'm Rob. I'm the sack guy. Oh, Rob. Yeah. The sack guy or the sack guy. I don't know what he said, but. All right, thank you, you so dude? much for yes, having dude. us. Oh. Rock'em, sock'em, socks, right? We got oh, halfway socks. there. It's rock'em, socks, but we're good. Rock'em, socks. I added too much. Can you sign it? Oh, yeah. I never did do that. I invented it. Wow. Who saw that first? I can't believe nobody's ever had me do this before. See, this is why rock'em. What is it? Socks? <laughs> socks. He's <laughs> innovating. And your special startup founder. I hate startup founders, man. He's got that startup founder fucking personality in it. Seed round motherfucker, carrying his laptop under his arm, motherfucker, popping in to get a quick coffee, motherfucker, stop and chat, motherfucker, walking meetings, motherfucker, standing desk, motherfucker. You know, he's definitely that kind of guy, right? Cycling to work on an e bike, motherfucker, electric skateboard, motherfucker. Sending memes in the fucking in the Slack motherfucker for sure. Exactly, exactly. Entrepreneur in his fucking bio, ideas guy in his bio. Fuck off, startup stench. Look at him, dweeb. Socks. <laughs> Rock'em sock'em socks. <laughs> Let's actually see these socks. What are they called? Rock'em sock'em. That's what we're good. Rock'em sock. Rock'em sock'em socks. Right. We got halfway there. It's Rock'em Socks, but we're good. Rock, Rock'em Socks. What the fuck is Rock'em Socks? They've got, spot, they've got a partnership with the NFL. <laughs> He's probably making loads of money, isn't it? <laughs> let's, see, let's, see, let's see Rock'em Socks. Let's see what they've got. What they got here? Rock'em Socks, the world's largest sock store. Yeah, this is some, this is some Barstool Sports is my ESPN thing, in it? Like, who the fuck wears this shit? Like, goofy movie VHS, but like, what? Who the fuck wears this shit? They, look, they got NB, they got like, are these all licensed? Do they have collaborations with all these things? Or is this just like, they got NBA, wow, fuck you now. They must make a bunch of money then, innit? Let's see if there, let's see if there's any news about them actually. Let's go to the news. Rockham Socks brings home the black and gold. Rockham Socks, Travis Hunter Day, Rockham Socks founder. Oh, he's a, he used to be a bas he used to be a basketball manager. Former basket he used to be a basketball man. What's what's a what's a is that a, is that a manager of a basketball player they mean? Okay. Fuck. Fair play, but still, the socks are lame and the guy's a dork, so it doesn't matter. Rock'em socks. I added too much. Can you sign it? Oh, yeah. I never did do that. I invented it. Wow. Who saw that first? I can't believe nobody's ever had me do this before. See, this is why Rock'em... What is it? Socks? <laughs> socks. <laughs> He's innovating. And your special oh or die God. was just... Your oh, special thanks. felt like you made Man. it for us. Man. Oh, really? Your... Well, well, no, 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 no. No way did he say that. He gave Grow, grow or Die a chef's kiss. What did the girl say? Grow oh, or Die God. was just... Your oh, special thanks. felt like you Man. made it for us. Man. Oh, really? Your special felt like you made it for us. What, did you also get accused of touching up little 15-year-old boys or something? What the fuck is this woman talking about? You made it for us. If my girl comes back home and tells me, babe, we gotta watch the next Crystalia special, right? If my girl comes back to me from at home from work and says, Babe, 
Let's put on the new Chris Alea special. Yeah? This is what I'm doing to her. <laughs> no, no, no shit. I was like, oh my god. I... Oh, yeah, 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 for I, real, I, for real. Thank you. Well, thank you have you so nice night. Thank you, man. You too, you guys. Yeah. Did an hour and seven of new stuff, not in the special. I think it was pretty good. Everyone seemed to be happy. Hey, see the lady. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so crazy. Oh my god. It's like they're performing for him. What the fuck is this, man? Oh my god. Okay, I don't care how big this woman's bum is, man. She's a fucking dweeb. She's a fucking dweeb. How embarrassing, bro. Just this image alone, these two black people doing this to him. Like, like what is this? They must well get on their knees and start kissing his feet and shit. What the fuck is this? Doing their we're black we're black dance. Hey man, we're black man. We like to we like hip hop, R and B, break dancing, popping and locking. Fuck off, bro. What the fuck is this? <laughs> the rent was due <laughs> exactly. Yeah, first of the month is fast approaching. Hey, what? This is important. The fans calling me a new name today. Oh, what is it? They call me Daddy Love. Oh. A girl walked up to me. She said, "You killed it tonight, Daddy." I said, <laughs> "I said I." She thought your name was Daddy Love. She thought it was Daddy Love. And then the other girls, there's a group of girls, and they're all like, "I think that should be your new name, Daddy Love." Didn't that happen, Lulu? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Daddy <laughs> Love. What you feel you about it? I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna call you Daddy, <laughs> but that's cool. <laughs>
called Akkad. In a single, there's one cartridge. The pistol hammer. When you put is hammer hammer is Action mode. Pistols, 12 double action. Guns like the P226, which are military so they don't accidentally discharge around. Now that you know the differences it's between It's similar to Bert saying you have to drink to open for me. They hold these comics hostage. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe maybe that's actually what's happening. That's a very good point. You kind of have to be there, don't you, right? You kind of have to like... So he's invited you on road. You're opening for him. So you kind of have to do this because you can't, you know, stay in your hotel room until the show. You kind of have to be in the room and entertain the guy, knowing it. That's a really good point. I never thought about it that way because these are his openers. He's paying them. <sighs> what a horrible gig to be an opener then. You're having to fucking force familiarity and pretend you're friends with this accused diddler. <laughs> alleged diddler, not accused, alleged. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I can do that no problem because I work out and my core's good. Can I tell you? And that, this, this is... Important. The fans calling me a new name today. Oh, what is it? They call me Daddy Love. Oh. It happened. You dead. <laughs> Daddy, uh, can you do less time tonight? <laughs> what is that accent on Daddy. <laughs> what if that was my name? You wouldn't call me that. What is that accent on Daddy. <laughs> what if that was like? <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Nothing Chris says could ever be this funny. She's gonna look back on this stuff in ten years' time and be embarrassed. Imagine, bro. The things people do for a paycheck, isn't it? <sighs> what if that was my name? You wouldn't call me that? No, I would not hire you. It would just have to be. <laughs> All right. I you wouldn't work for me if my name was Daddy. <laughs> Every time, be like, and give it up for the very funny, very handsome. Oh, they say you wouldn't work for me. Come on, bro. <laughs> Daddy love. <laughs> I like what it's doing to him. Mm. Yeah, but what is he doing? He's both, bro. He's buff, bro. He on that creatine. Can we yeah. tell the people? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Juicy. He has that creatine. First of all, creatine is not juicing. I well, know. you should have seen him. We was in the gym, he took his shirt off. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I, I gave him a black compliment. I said, hey, Chris, you looking all right. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I am so sorry about the water. And you immediately had a bit in mind? No, no, I didn't. I just did it with the black. You mean the little way you did? I was fine. Because you were about to walk out? You had a towel in your hand. Like, you was about to walk yeah. out and clean it up. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. No bueno. I can't do that anymore. I can't do it anymore. I can't see my people going out of that. I can't do it. Anyways, so Dana White, <laughs> Dana motherfucking White, Dana Andrew Clive John White, the third, decided to get on his Twitter 
and annihilate our dear papa annihilate our dear papa with this legend of a tweet which says hashtag ufc 300 laughing face emoji nothing else on there just that but the video itself was really interesting because you might see a familiar face what's up guys as we rolled into ufc 300 uh the mma experts weighed in on what they thought of ufc 300 and for all the fighters that were on this card when i said this is the greatest card ever assembled in the history of combat sports this is what the media thought of you guys UFC 300 makes no sense. Is any. <laughs> Did you see that? There's Papa. We know him. We know that guy, right? Lino DiCaprio fucking meme. Look at what they put underneath his name Podcaster as occupation. Podcaster. Brendan is a former top 10, top 15 UFC heavyweight. Knocked out fucking Mirko Krokop. They still use that highlight in some of the scissor reels for fucking UFC fights. But they're referring to him as a podcaster. Not former UFC fighter. Not former Uf MMA fighter. Podcaster. Not even stand-up comedian. Because obviously he quit. Kind of. Or not. Or he did. They're calling him a podcaster. Dana fucking white strikes again that smarmy tomato head of his that fucking always red light on dome of his won once again consistently rubbing salt in the wound that is papa and ignoring all the calls probably from rogan to leave him alone i'm sure rogan's probably had a word of him hey leave him alone he's very thin-skinned it hurts his feelings when you attack him but Dana doesn't give a scooby-doo fuck. He keeps on rubbing the salt in. So now, he did it again by referring to Papa as a podcaster. But I do like this video because I was going to make a video on it, but I got lazy. Where I was going to go back and see all the things Brendan said about UFC 300. Because he was weirdly very vocal about not liking it before the card was even finalized and i couldn't understand why i get it was like you know the preparation for it seemed a bit lackluster or underwhelming i understand but the quality of the fight card was never going to be in question they were never going to let 300 go by without making it a banger and if anything um without the card being fully formed or confirmed how could you really hate on it anyway it was a strange position to have he was really going hard at it but I, f I suspect, my hint, my suspicion is, I don't think he actually believed the card would be shit. I think he was just trying to parrot the things he heard other talking heads, commentators say. But to be different, he kind of ramped it up a bit. He added a bit more salt on it. He put a bit more spice to his rice. I think some other people had their reservations about UFC 300, whether it be good or not. But he wanted to stand out. So he tried to start saying, you know, what he said. And plus, Brendan's got history with the UFC. He's always felt like the UFC, you know, is, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They just kind of wing it. That famous line about, you know, he said to Dana where it's like, oh, I can do your job. You can't do mine type of thing. I think Brendan really does believe that. I think he really believes he can do a better job at matchmaking and at running the, the UFC as a CEO better than fucking Dana White. So a lot of that kind of, you know, leaks into some of his criticism because he's got a bias because he fucking hates them. But it was still a bit overboard. And I'm glad the UFC are calling him out on his shit because he didn't, that's the thing about Brendan, he didn't admit this. He didn't admit that he was wrong on the UFC 300. He just acted like it didn't happen and just kept, just kept on going, just kept on steamrolling through. He never acknowledged that he called the UFC 300 completely wrong. He said it'll be shit. He, he even said fucking what? He said fucking um, Gaethje would win against Holloway. But well, then when Holloway won in, in epic fashion, he acted like he fucking always knew so I, I'm glad the UFC hold him to task. Like, uh, let's remember. Let's fucking remember what you did and what you said. Any fight on this card 300 worthy? No. This is the most diabolically... Hey, yo, big up I am Sin. Long time no see. What's happening? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Long time no see. What's good? 
Yo, big up Eduardo Madeira. What's happening? What's that thing? What's pa- <laughs> Who said that funny donor? Pathological Redard is fucking incredible. I love that. That's what it should be on the thing, isn't it? Pathological Redard. Disappointing UFC 300 announcement ever. Who the fuck is Jesse Merrill? Who the fuck is that? Oh, that's uh, Jess on Fire, isn't it? Oh, is that his name? Jesse Merrill. <sighs> Look at that grill, bro. How's your nose bigger than your chin? Have you seen that with somebody? His nose looks like it's bigger than his chin. How's that possible? I love how the animation look. Look at the diff. Look at that's how you know somebody is very delusional about what they look like. Look at the animation of him and look at what he actually looks like. <laughs> look at the animation. Look at how, look at the strong jaw, the little nose. Look at him. His animation actually has a receding hairline. He doesn't really have much. Anyway, yeah. He's got a fucking absolute snoozer on him, isn't it? Absolute snoozer. Look at that. It looks like some yams, isn't it? It's never. It feels kind of thrown to. Really? Is that HGH? Let me see that. Big up Valdez. Does H G make your nose bigger? Changes to the face may cause the brow burn, lower jawbone to protrude. The nose and lips get larger. Acromegaly. Acromegaly is a hormonal disorder that develops on your pituitary gland. Produces too much growth hormone. Yo, big up. I can't with Baba. I think he has for real, but big ass for keeping us entertained. Yes, you know the deal. Big up. I am sin. Appreciate you so much. Long time no see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... I'm going to go on a limb here. I don't buy the CTE argument. I think you're, I think people that say Brendan's got CTE, you're giving him an easy cop out. I just think he's redacted. I think he's fucking dumb, but not like in a bad way. You know, like you grew up with some people you went to school with who are just dumb. It's not their fault. They're just dumb. I think that's the same with Brendan. The CTE thing is an easy cop out. He's just dumb. Dumb, which is okay because I think he serves a purpose especially in America, with, with, with it being the American dream and thing, right? He's been able to achieve so much in spite of how dumb he is. Um, but yeah, the CTE thing, I don't buy. No CTE. He quit fighting long ago. He doesn't spar anymore. Um, he lives a pretty cushy life. I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy the CTE, like, the CTE thing. Um, the guy is just... Da-da-da-da-dum. But big up I'm sitting, appreciate you, appreciate you. Um let's continue. What, what video are we watching again? Oh yeah, this one. Together. It doesn't feel like the culmination of something big. We were continually told that it's gonna knock your socks off. It's who's this? Oh, is that um is that um this is uh, Ariel's Ariel's co host, right? Okay. I didn't even know his name, I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea what his name was. Big up Eric though. It's gonna be amazing. What did Dana say about this? Right. We're gonna blow their socks off. I wanted my jaw to hit the fucking ground. I did expect a little bit more from the company. Oh no, to BC. Blow us away. Nobody got blown away. Nobody. Falls. We- By the way, um, don't you find it is funny that they're featuring these people? Because none of these people are prominent or really that famous, unless I'm a casual. The people that they're focusing on aren't super famous. They're not like super. But then, then again, I, I don't know. Who's the most well known fucking MMA or UFC journalist or pundit person? Luke Thomas, I guess. Ariel. Who else? Robin Black? I don't think... I don't know. So, it's weird that they mention this, people, because they're not that well-known. And also, I think it's all taken out of context, kind of. They were kind of, you know, right to call into question whether or not UFC 300 would be good because the card wasn't done yet. In You know, the card wasn't done with any real notice and shit. We need people that know the sport to be running the show because this is pathetic. UFC 300, the worst promoted fight card. Rudy Rodriguez Chermat. Who's this? Is he, is he well known? He's got a lot of, he's got a lot of dye in that beard, isn't it? Fucking hell, bro. He might as well have painted it with fucking acrylic. That's a dark beard. I wonder why some guys don't dye their beards based on what their actual beard, what their actual hair color is. Why do they go for like the the level above? Like if you, whatever your tone of color is, or just get the. Hmm. 
I bet there's a reason for it, but I don't know why. Guys that have dyed their hair like a weird tone of black that doesn't match their actual real hair color. It's like, why would you do that? Never worst put together fight card ever. Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway for the BMF title, which I think is the corniest nonsense on earth. Wait, oh no, the corniest nonsense on earth. Well, it is a corny title to be fair. The fights are good, but actually, what was that one fight BMF title that was terrible? Wasn't that one fight terrible? Wasn't that the fight um with fucking um Jorge Masvidal? Am I remembering that one? Didn't Jorge fight for the BMF title once? It was a shit fight. That might be one of the worst BMF fights, I think. Zhang against Zhao Nian. China's gonna get all excited. And I don't think anyone else really cares. UFC 300 will be a disaster. Are you kidding me, Dana White? The most <laughs> monumental card that there's ever been. You've had a whole year to prepare for this. Aren't you trying to make sales? Don't you Who's Lucas Tracy? Fair play, man. To be fair, the this is a bit, you know, these are some minor people. The, the UFC are like, Dana's really petty, man. This is a weird dunk. These guys aren't that well known, like, and they had reasons to be, you know. Yeah, this is a funny, this is a, this is, Dana's fucking a legend, though, in a weird way. Imagine a CEO moving like this, being disaware of these minor characters on the outside saying some concerns about your organization, and you're fucking remember. you're literally writing down names. <laughs> Dana's got time. Dana has time for everything. He sees and no. Oh, he's so petty. It's so fucking dumb. He's like his petty. <laughs> it's insane. Don't you want people to actually buy the pay per view? This ain't it. As far as I'm concerned, they're quoting Reddit posts. It's just a regular, decent pay per view. I was really happy for Jury, by the way. I fucking love Jury. I was really happy for him. Nation watching two Chinese fighters competing for UFC gold. Insane. Yo, that waist was on waist, didn't it? That waist was on waist, Jury pro entire nation watching two Chinese fighters competing for UFC Yeah, she went ham on the fucking waist trainer, innit? Fuck you now. Imagine your waist looking like that when you wake up. Can you imagine how that life must be? You're just looking down and you just see flatness. Imagine what that must feel like. It must feel kind of nice, isn't it? <laughs> it must feel really fucking nice. Just wake up one day and just be like, my body T. <laughs> yeah, this is still the legend. One of the, yeah, fucking... So yeah, fair play. Um, big up fucking Dana for being the petty bastard that he fucking is. Love to see it. Um, sh but surely his time could be best spent doing other things. But maybe this is what makes UFC so fucking entertaining. Do you know what I mean? It's a big production, high level production, you know. But they also got a CEO in charge who really loves this petty shit, you know. <laughs> it kind of makes it fun. But yeah, he did that. And then um, fucking obviously Papa saw it. Brenda saw it and decided to do a little fucking tweet of himself. Let's see Brenda here. Trying to combat what fucking Dana said. Where is he? Brenda and Schwabby. Where are you, bro? There he is. If you're enjoying the stream, also make sure you like the stream down below. I appreciate you the most if you do that for me. Um, and then obviously he said this. What did he say here at the bottom? He says, why are you bringing up old shit? Fair play, UFC fight was amazing. Fair play, you know, because you got called out about fair play. I think he made a ton of edits to this as well, didn't he? If I'm not mistaken. It looks kind of edited. Or maybe it isn't. Oh, it's a, oh, you see me as well here. <laughs> Whoopsie, I also tweeted. That's awesome. He said respect. That's awesome. So I'm not too sure if this is 
a diss. I'm not sure if he's dissing Dana, if Dana's dissing here, or if he's actually doesn't have a problem with the guy. I don't know what's going on, really, but I expected to see like a real long page, a long caption from fucking Brendan going at fucking Dana, but we're not going to get it because, you know, he squashed the beef pretty quickly. But I wanted to see that, man. I really wanted to see it. I really did want to fucking see it. What's the reply saying here? Uh, the subtle shade of calling Brendan a podcast not former UFC fighter or something. Dana didn't pull the receipt. He sent you an invoice. Weird move on Dana though. Shaw caught in 4K. Touche, podcaster. You know why. You're the most unknowledgeable person in all of MMA. Yo, that is a... In all of MMA, full stop. In all of MMA, punto. You suck, bro. Your viewership is dying. Of course you shared this. Probably the highlight of your life. <laughs> to be fair, your body did change his tune at 300. Say what you want, but yo, that card did not live up to the hype. It was, oh, shut up, you idiot. Because you and my, many others went off on the UFC 300 card, no reason. The card was phenomenal for when it was announced. But so many people, included, yourself included, doubted it. It was solid, but if Max doesn't do what he did, shut up, you idiot. Honestly, MMA fans, UFC fans are kind of ignoring, annoying, innit? They are some of the worst opinions, man. I think it's a bit like football. Football's the same thing. There's so many dumb football fans that don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Pretty sure he was just trying to point out how dead wrong you all were. That's all about it. it could do, to be fair, as an event gets closer, you warmed up. Oh, shut up no one cares anyway whatever 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 yeah he seems to turn oh so the awkwardness was awesome yeah i choose dana over brendan any day that's the thing eduardo isn't it dana's such a piece of no dana brendan is so widely disliked even though dana is a noteworthy and documented and high profile piece of shit People will still pick Dana over Brendan. That's that's how you know you're how what how not well regarded you are. When people will still side with Dana, even though he's got a history, an extensive track record of being a real scumbag, people will still side with Dana over Brendan. Fucking wild, isn't it? Absolutely wild. But yeah, the beef is over then, I guess. I guess the beef is squashed, but I wanted to see more back and forth, but I think, you know, Dana kind of stopped it on the head. Maybe he got a text from fucking Rogan telling him to fucking chill out. But either way, I wanted to see more, 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 but we're not going to get it. We are not going to get it. Do you guys want to see a funny clip? Do you guys want to see a funny clip? I bet you guys want to see a funny clip. Look at this. Mitch, the Carney, baby. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. So thanks for coming on, dude. So we just want to learn about Carnies and Carnival employees, fairs, everything like it. Um, what is Carney an appropriate term? Yeah, I was born and raised a Carney. Really? My grandparents were Carnies. My parents were Carnies. My brother and his kids are Carnies. No still. way. Oh, yeah. So it's it runs deep, man. 1918, he started. And can I say before we really get going? Yeah, I gotta thank you for having a poor pedestrian like me on because you know, I don't wear a watch and I don't use a washcloth, so Tom would never have me on. <laughs> oh, <Zara? laughs> I appreciate, yeah, it talks oh, like, yeah, it is. He, yeah, he doesn't like the pores, he doesn't or like whatever. the pores. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> <coughs> what a fucking legend what a fucking legend i love this guy what a absolute crazy fucking legend he came in hot that's in the first 50 seconds of the episode i didn't trim it ahead of the episode the episode starts and within 50 seconds he's trashing <laughs> tom segura one more time one more time a pedestrian like me on no still way oh yeah so it's it runs deep, man. 1918 he started. And can I say before we really get going? Yeah. I gotta thank you for having a poor pedestrian like me on. Because you know, I don't wear a watch and I don't use a washcloth, so Tom would never have me on. <laughs> oh, <Zara? laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, Tom Oh like, yeah, it is he, yeah. Oh, yeah, he doesn't like the pores. <laughs> he doesn't or like whatever. the pores. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. I think we're great people. Yeah, look, I don't yeah. I'm not yeah, I don't have a washcloth. I I probably should have one. That's what I he gagged the fear. He gagged the fear there fear doesn't know what to say 
Fio doesn't know what to say. He got caught off guard. He was, he, yeah. He, has, he hates washcloths. Oh, he hates them? He hates them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, I, I, yeah, I'll use a washcloth like to get like in here, though. Yeah, right? I mean, how do you get how it do you out? Get in how do you there? really screw? I try to just using my fingernail and getting it out and then just like putting it like that into the drain or whatever, but I don't think that's enough sometimes. No, Especially cost. as you get older. Yeah. You know? Um it's but a good yeah. old wet willy. <laughs> yeah, I you gotta doing a wet willy on somebody? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember doing uh, I'm gonna sneak one up on you later. Oh, are you really <laughs> <laughs> just wear a condom, bro? <laughs> oh, I will. Okay, that's all I'm asking for, you know. I mean it's the least you could do, dude. The Irish hello. Oh, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah. It's our first time hanging too, so I'll definitely keep it covered. Yeah. Um <laughs> <coughs> When comedians meet actual real crazy people, like in a good way, it's always funny how they react because like this is what this is what you want to meet. You meet you want to meet people like this because this, he's going to give you stories. He's going to share experiences with you. This is the kind of person you want to meet because it's someone who'd inform your comedy. Like this is a legit personality, a legit character who's lived a thousand lives and they don't know how to act like. But Phil's done. Phil's a good though. To be fair, he does these shows pretty awesome. And I've said before. I think Fio's podcast is underrated, more so because of the regular people he interviews. Like, I think he did one with a guy that works at a graveyard. He's done one with a policewoman, the single mothers. He's done one with teachers. Like, those actual regular people interviews are fucking phenomenally good. I swear to God, they're really good. Only he could make them really funny and fun. But it's funny also, again, when they come into contact with, you know, people that are quote unquote legitly crazy or legitimately crazy. Um, they don't have to react like <laughs> Fia was like a bit nervous there. Number. Oh, I will. Okay. That's all I'm asking for, you know? I mean, it's the least you could do, dude. The Irish hello. Oh, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah. It's our first time hanging too, so I'll definitely keep it covered. Yeah. First time hanging too, so I'll definitely keep it covered. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nervous thumbs up. That was a fucking nervous, nervous thumbs up. I love it. I love it. I love that thumbs up. Dude, the Irish hello. Oh, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's our first time hanging too, so I'll definitely keep it covered. Yeah. It's our first time hanging too, so I'll definitely keep it covered. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Honestly. Big up fucking Theo. Oh, brilliant Tom Segura burn. That was much needed. Tom Segura needs a bit of a burn like that. Tom Segura needs a bit of a burn like that um let's continue let's continue oh we got the special ministry to fix it don't pay everybody special oh look at this look at the original crew look at this post i found look at the original crew look at the original crew look at the original crew look at how different they all look back in the day full of life innocent sweet Look at the original crew back in the day. Special K and T Fat K. J there, Bapa, Rinks, and Special. You remember Special K? She was the first intern. She was the original, the original cat. She, bless her though. Big up her. She's never come out and said nothing bad. She ever went on a podcast run like fucking BGL. She never trashed these guys and she knows a lot of shit because she was there in the beginning. So she could really give some insight. But she kind of ran away, you know? from the podcast and scene and hasn't been seen since. So big up, um, big up to uh, Special K for being, you know, for chilling out. Papa looks, you know, great. Look, he looks kind of normal in the face. This is pre HGH and shit. Body looks a bit normal too. Like R Brian has aged like a million years, which makes sense. But Brian kind of looked decent here, isn't it? Look, now he looks like a legit old man. Special K is there shining. That's the old crew, bro. The old crew. All we're missing here is Evan the Beard. The only person we're missing is Evan the Beard. And it looks like they're hanging out too. It looks like they're hanging out somewhere, like in a studio or like somewhere else in a, in a bar. They used to actually hang out outside of work. Now they just clock in and clock out. Chin's probably never been to... You know what's fucking funny? Chin's probably never been to Brian Brendan's house. Chin's probably only met Brendan's wife because she pops in at the office sometimes. That's the wild thing about it. Chin's probably never been to Brian's house or Brendan's house in the whole time he's worked with T-Fat K. And I would, 
go as far as saying that they've probably met each other outside of the office or studio less than five times. They've probably been with each other as a group that's cheered it less than five fucking times. Could you imagine that? Damn. Damn, damn, damn. But although she hasn't been on pods, I would love to hear what Special K had to say. I would love to hear Special K's thoughts and what she thinks of T-Fat K nowadays. How it, you know, how things went down. Does she regret her time there? Could she see the writing on the wall? I'd love for her to know. I'd love, I'd love to find out from Special K. Wild Guan. I'd love it. I really fucking would. Okay, cool. Um, I have to bounce because what time is it now? Okay, let's do a couple more before I leave. I'm gonna do a couple more. Let's do a couple. Let's do a couple more. Couple more. Couple more. Couple more. Couple more. Um, let's do a Yuri one. Let's do a Yuri one before I leave. Have you guys seen this? So let's do this. Look at this. You heard this Yuri one. Yuri freaks out on Riley for missing a parking spot. Yes, you bet that right. Yuri freaks out on Riley for missing a parking spot. Okay. You know the drama between Yuri and Riley. I don't have to explain it to you too much. Listen to them arguing over parking. At this rate, why not just break up? If this, if this is me, why not just break up? Why be together when you argue like this constantly? Why? What? Damn. I said damn. Yeah. Alright. Oh shit, could you open the door? Here, get more in... in you're like hey, by the way, big up Eduardo. I do. I do feel bad for Chin. Um, I don't like making fun of him. I don't make fun of of Chin. I make fun of his cooking and his horrible vlogs. I've always said I think he's an amazing dude in terms of, of a producer. He's amazing. He does a job of like free people by himself. He never complains. He's never ill. He always turns up. He rarely takes vacations. He's always dependable. He's a good dude in that respect. Um, it's just sad because we all know how it's going to end we all know we're all not naive we're all adults we know people like that usually are the ones that get taken advantage of so even though he's been a fucking loyal soldier he's been dependable consistent always there in the end we know he's going to get fucked by them we know papa's going to fuck him that's a sad thing about it you know he's given his whole life to t5k um which maybe he's good for his cv and shit but we know it's going to end in tears. We just know it. That's the only sad thing about it. It's like he can't see it. And he should really try and jump ship quickly. <clears throat> but, you know, he doesn't want to. Super in the middle of the street. Pull just pull up to the right, put your emergency zone. Yeah, oh, I hate this car right now. I can't. It's not the car, it's you. Stop. Just, oh my God, bro. I want to drive so bad right now, dude. Can you just... Not close to the house at all, but whatever. You, you, pull up right I there. I want to scream right now, Yuri. It's not that... No, it's you're not making it science, worse. Dude. You make everything worse with your stupid ass fucking attitude. Bro. <laughs> Why are so ruined because we had a car behind us now? That's why the vibes are ruined. What? Now I'm an enemy and all this shit because a car was behind us and you freaked out. Oh, Let's go. Perfect. Oh you can just what? stop. And no, you, you, you keep continuing it. You keep. Bro. You can just stop. I'm asking you to please stop. Let's see, I'm gonna go find a parking spot. Alright. <laughs> right. So, you see how he's bullying and, you know, um, poking his girl and making her feel like shit right you see what he's doing there right you see that right you see that okay cool <clears throat> you see how much of a dick he's being to his girl yeah you see all that shit cool you see how much he's trying to you know trying to be a piece of shit yeah cool now watch this now watch this right you see how he's being a dickhead to his girl now watch this watch this watch this clip This is Yuri, by the way, with his phone in his hand, waiting at the gas station. I don't care. I don't want to go there. Hello. 
Oh, you got the Modelo. Let's go. Fire. Have a good night, man. You see what happened there? He let this random guy cut in on the queue. He didn't say a fucking word. He shut up like a fucking pipsqueak. He's standing there waiting at the gas station. This guy is getting his stuff. This dude's having some argument with somebody in the car. Yuri's clearly waiting in the quote-unquote queue. The guy doesn't even pay him attention and just stands in front of the other guy and orders his shit. And Yuri doesn't say a single word. So Yuri's got all the smoke for his girlfriend. He manipulates her. He fucking, you know, what's that thing called? He's always fucking provoking her into argument. Doesn't want to shut up. Always gaslighting. Then when another man cuts him in a queue, he has nothing to say. He's fucking mute. If anything, he starts glazing this guy. Oh, you're getting a Modelo, yeah? Have a good night, man. Like, what the f you don't know, you don't know me. What the fuck you else tell me about have, have a good night? He starts glazing this guy because obviously what happens is that he feels scared because this guy is clearly in an angry mood. He's or he's frustrated about something. He's arguing. He's talking loudly to somebody in the car. So Yuri gets scared. He gets real scary right here, and he doesn't want to tell the guy, "Hey, by the way, I'm in front," because he doesn't want to get punched up in front of, in the camera. But when it's his girlfriend, he's got all the fucking smoke. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the guy cuts in front. Oh, you got the Modelo. Let's go. They don't know each other. Glazing from Yuri. Fire. Have a good night, man. Then it says another thing to get his attention. Yeah. The guy cuts in front. Yuri doesn't say a word. Look at Yuri. Now he's looking away. He's not even staring at the guy. He's trying to not make eye contact. He's so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pussy. <laughs> he's definitely the guy that only can only argue with girls. Can only fight girls. But when a guy steps to, to him, he fucking quibbles. <laughs> now he's laughing. Ooh. Oh, he laughed and the guy turned around. Oh, Yuri didn't want that smoke. Look at that. <laughs> Kaza, who the fuck are you? Que pasa? Que pasa? Que pasa? Look at that. He was scared. Yuri was scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's where it ends. Yuri scared. He didn't. He didn't laugh again, did he? See, he didn't laugh again. He got that one look. He did not laugh again. I love it. Big up to that, 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 that Latino man for putting fucking Yuri on fucking manners. Um, big up to Very Design. There's no new chin, man. There's no new chin. I don't think there's any new chin. Unless you want me to watch an old one. Maybe I have to search through them to see good ones to react to. But there's no new chin, brother. Yeah, there's no new one. We already watched the other one. We watched uh, Two Trips, One Fish. We've done quite a few on the stream. I'm not going to lie. We've done quite a few on the stream. I'm looking now. All of them have got red bars. The only one we haven't done, which I might do, is Urban Camping Fish and a giveaway. I don't think we've done that because my, my, my phone doesn't say we've done it. So maybe I'll do that one next time. But we've done quite a few of them. All the all the the previous one, two, three, four, five, six we've kind of done. We've watched on the stream. Fucking hell, man! We, how many fucking chin vlogs have we watched on here? It's kind of embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe we have to go to the beginning and start and watch them all, all the way up. Maybe that might have to be a thing. I might have to do that going forward. Then I'll just start from the bottom and go all the way up one day. Cool. Um. Anyway. My friends, I have to love you and leave you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure, never a fucking chore, all right? Always a pleasure, never a fucking chore. Thank you for tuning in. First time, make sure you press a like button for me. Don't be stingy. Smash a like button for me, please. Smash a like button for me, please. And um, yeah, man, I'll see you all again soon, innit? I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Appreciate ya. Everybody.
Dun Dutta, Sever Design, Joff Mermaye, Dun Dutta, Z, Uche, Lever, Eduardo Madeira, Privap U, TV Huck, Alejandro Brown, Dusky the Flow. Yes, my guy, hope you're well, my friend. All of you, thank you so much for tuning in, man. Dexter Watson as well, big up to you. I see you there, all righty. Big up to you, big up, big up, big up, big up. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you all soon. Peace. Yep, I'm Sin. Big up to you. Thank you for joining. E Zanella. <laughs> e Zanella, is that is that uh, is that one of uh Ben Shaw's wives um relatives? That would be hilarious if they watched this shit. But big up you, appreciate all you. Take care, take care. Bye, 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 bye.